whale oil from the cold Antarctic seas, coconut, groundnut and palm oils extracted from nuts grown in hot lands. Here, ending their long journeys, they arrive at the creamery in tankers. In the creamery, the oils are kept in heated storage tanks like these two. As required, they are drawn off to be weighed. Weighing the oils in their correct proportions is the start of making a batch of margarine. This man is turning on a tap at the end of a pipe leading from one of the storage tanks. The oil flows into a small tank that forms part of a weighing machine. The weight of each oil is shown on the dial of this machine. Here is hardened whale oil being weighed. Hardened oils are solid at room temperatures. To keep them liquid, they are stored in tanks where they can be heated above their melting points. The whale oil is run off into a further tank and hardened groundnut oil is weighed. This is followed in turn by palm oil. coconut oil and groundnut oil. The nuts that are the sources of these oils are very important for they also yield a substance rich in protein that is very suitable for making into cattle cake. Each oil is weighed and the quantity recorded. The approximate proportions used in margarine manufacture are 41% coconut oil, 24% groundnut oil, 20% hardened whale oil, 8% palm oil, 7% hardened groundnut oil. These oils are pumped into a temperating tank which has a surrounding hollow space into which either steam or iced water can be run in order to control the temperature. Adding emulsifier to the mixture of oils comes next. This emulsifier may be either lecithin or abricol. Margarine, like butter, is an emulsion of oil and water. Without the emulsifier, these two liquids will not mix. Paddles rotating in the temperating tank thoroughly mix the contents, which at the same time are brought to a temperature of about 40 degrees centigrade. While the temperature of the oils and emulsifier is reaching 40 degrees centigrade, the next operation is mixing salt with iced water in another tank. The salt goes in and the paddles go round to help it to dissolve in the water. When enough iced water is in the tank, the man turns off the tap. Churning is just as necessary in margarine making as in butter making. The first stage is churning cultured milk and iced salt water. This bucket contains a special milk culture made with lactic acid bacteria. The margarine gets its butter flavor from this culture. Into the churning tank goes the culture to be followed by the iced water led in through a pipe. Culture and water are churned for a few minutes. The mixture of oil and emulsifier are run into the same churning tank. The whole is churned for about 10 minutes. From the churn, the mixture runs down a pipe and is forced through a series of perforated blades rapidly rotated by an electric motor. Here the transformation takes place and emulsion is produced. To this emulsion the remaining ingredients are added. Flavor, vitamins and color. These three go into the emulsion in the churning tank. Vitamins are among the last substances to be added because they tend to be destroyed by agitation. A very gentle rotation of the paddles gives a final mixing. The emulsion, still warm, now requires cooling. From the churn, 
the warm liquid is pumped through pipes to a small reservoir as long as and fitted close to a revolving drum. Here is the liquid flowing into the reservoir. The outflow from the reservoir is controlled so that as the drum rotates, a layer of emulsion, one six thousandth part of an inch thick, is deposited on it. The drum is cooled from within to a temperature of about two degrees centigrade. The deposit makes one rotation, during which time it becomes frozen hard. Just under the reservoir is a knife blade, which scrapes the now solid margarine from the drum. It falls in flakes onto a moving belt. This belt takes the margarine to the top of a chute. There remain now only two processes, kneading and packing. Down the chute, the flakes drop to the kneading machine, inside which is a big screw, in shape rather like that in a mincing machine. The screw forces the margarine along until it is extruded from the end and falls into a stainless steel trolley. The colour, now a rich gold, stands out against the white paint and stainless steel of the creamery. The margarine is taken in the trolley to a cool room, where it stays about two hours. After this time, it is then ready for packing. It is fed from the trolley into a packing machine. This machine automatically separates margarine into half-pound pieces and perforates the date on the wrapping papers. This enables a check to be made if, later, anything proves wrong with the margarine. The machine wraps up the pieces, delivering a constant stream onto another moving belt. The margarine, now in its finished state, passes into the control of the Ministry of Food before being made available for sale. All the people concerned in the production have taken the greatest care to ensure cleanliness, purity, and maximum food value. Whalers in the Antarctic, growers in the hot lands, scientists, technicians, and many others in various parts of the world have all played their parts in the making of margarine from oil. <laughs>